The querying of data is an extremely important part of doing GIS. When we query the data in a database, what we're doing is we're asking specific questions and what data meets the criteria of that specific question. So if we have a map, and we might be showing on that map a bunch of census tracts, we could query the data and say, show me everywhere that people make at least $30,000 a year. And then only those census tracts where people make at least $30,000 a year are displayed. At the same time, it still may be displaying a gradient of people who make 30 to 35,000, 35,000 to 38,000, and so on. The gradient may still be displayed, but we're only seeing those tracks where the people meet that criteria. Also in query of data, we can write more complicated statements using logic functions, using logical ands and logical ors and not ands and not or type functions. An and function means everything in set A must be true and everything in set B must be true to get a truth out. So if we say show us everywhere that people make $30,000 or more a year and that they have at least a college degree, only the places where those two subsets match will be displayed. So if it's true in the first subset that they make more than $30,000 but that they don't have enough people to make, have a college degree, it won't be displayed. If they have people with enough college degrees but not enough income, those won't be displayed only where both items meet the criteria will it be displayed. The OR function works that it meets this criteria or it meets this criteria. So if either criteria is met, it's displayed, not that both criteria have to be met. So we can do these logical type functions and we can write very complicated um, query functions to show what we want to be able to be seen. And we can look at multiple different fields obviously in the query so we can look at what's going on in the income field, we can look at education attainment field, we might look at um, gender equity type fields. So there's multiple fields that we can be looking at at the same time in a query type statement. What's displayed on the map may only show one set of fields but then we query that data to show that set of fields it's like income with all the other information queried out to get only this information that we really want to see. Likewise, we can then look at the data if we need to, actually the numerical values and do numerical analysis of just those values once we produce the query information. So querying can take many different forms. It can be a very simple query. It can be a more complicated query. We can query one set of information but display a different set of information for whatever reason that might be needed. So we're going to show you three different cases of how we query data in this piece of video. The map that you're observing is of northeastern Kentucky with two counties of southern Ohio, Brown and Adams being in Ohio, the remaining counties in this map being in Kentucky. The map is made up of a group of census tracts. Remember we had downloaded individual census tracts for different counties. What we've then done is merged all these individual county census tracts together so we have one data file. Right now we are looking at 53001 of the census tracts and remember that area is the median income from the 2000 census. The cream colored areas that you see is sort of the mean of these different income levels. So this is sort of where the average income is for the people that live in this area. Those that are tan and brownish color are areas of lower income those that are in the greens are areas of higher income. So you can generalize that those people who live in the eastern part of this map are of lower income levels than those that live in the western part of this map. Cincinnati, Ohio would be to the west of this map. We're going to utilize this map to query information about different census tracts. Bring up the properties window again and we're going to go to query um, define the quarry. We're going to go to Quarry Builder. And we want to pull down here to 53001. That is, remember again, our median income area. We want to know every census tract which has a median income less than, and let's choose a number of $27,000. And say OK. We have now built a logical query. You can see our function here. If 
the income level is less than 27,000, it's going to be viewable. If it's greater than 27,000 or equal to 27,000, it will not be viewable. And we're going to say apply that. And we're going to say OK. And now we can see the areas that are $27,000 or less. Our breakpoint for this lighter tan color was 28.6. So some areas that might have been in this color now have dropped out since we used 27,000 as our base area. So we can see those areas that are the lowest income levels in this multiple county region of northeastern Kentucky and southern Ohio. So that's one of the functions of using a quarry. Another function of a quarry is to be able to build a little bit more complicated statements. So again, I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to clear my quarry by just highlighting it and pressing the delete key. Go to quarry builder again. And let's look here at something a slight bit different. This first category here. Remember this first category is 0, 0, 1001 zero, zero, one is a population category. If we're going to look at what the values of that population category are here. So let's say I want to know every place that we have greater than or equal to 2,000 people living there and an income level greater than or equal to $30,000. So those are our quarries. This has to be true and this has to be true to see it plotted on our map. So we're going to say OK. Again we can see the statement here. There's going to be these tracks that are greater than 2,000 people and have incomes greater than 30,000 is all that's going to be seen. We're going to say apply and OK. And we can see those areas that are greater than $30,000 income, median income, and have greater than 2,000 people living in them. So this is a combined quarry. This is not just a simple quarry like the first one we did, but this is a combined one. And we can see how that functions there. Another way that we can query the data is by taking one layer, this being the layer of median income, and you can see our values over here, and querying off of a different layer. So let's do that. I'm going to double click and bring up Define Query. We go to Query Builder like we did before. And we're going to query off of layer 3707. Well, what's 3707? 3707 is a layer saying that people have only attained up to the ninth grade in education. Let's look at our values. So here's our values for that layer. So let's say we want to know every census tract where there's at least 50 people that have only obtained up to a ninth grade education. So we're going to say OK with that. We're going to say OK again. And we can see those census tracts in which people have only obtained up to a ninth grade education. What we're seeing on the screen is the income levels of those census tracts. And we can see that a large number of these are in our poorest census tracts. So is there a correlation? Well, we'd have to do more analysis to figure out if there is truly a correlation here. But there appears to be some type of correlation because as you look at this, these are the poor census tracts, the browns and the um, tan color ones. We can double click again here. We can clear that quarry just to go back and look at it and say OK. And we can see, well, there was some real poor areas here that didn't show up, some over here that didn't show up. So is there a correlation or not? That's difficult to say. 
because it's also related on the total population of each of these census tracts. Even though census tracts are about equal population, they're not perfectly equal population, so it may be in a more of a population situation instead of a direct correlation. These are the type of things that you can do with a coring of data. Now that you've seen three different ways we can quarry data, we want you to go out and try some other quarrying of data beyond what we have done. So maybe write more complicated statements, maybe bring more data fields in and combine those together to do your quarry. But we want you to look at other ways you can quarry the data. Quarrying is an extremely important part of being able to do GIS successfully.